Hey everyone. Today we're going to run through the install of uh, Salient OS and I wanted to show you the new log on screen. This is now using LightDM instead of SDDM. Um, I've logged out just to show you it. As you know, the username is live user with the password live. So let's log in. And now by default, this is the very latest build. Today's build, in fact, the 20th. Um, I've decided to re-enable desktop icons just to make it easier for new users to install Salient, even though I describe how to get to that menu item in the README. I think it will be easy this way, and it's very easy to turn this back off. If you prefer not to have desktop icons, you just come into your settings, desktop settings, and Turn them, turn them off, just set it to none, and you're good to go. But for now, I'm going to leave it enabled. So once it's booted in, you just click on the Install Salient OS icon and select your language, select your location, click Next. Keyboard should automatically be selected once you've selected your location. In this instance, I'm doing this in a virtual virtual box, so I'm going to let it erase the disk. I'm going to add a user. I'm just going to keep it simple for the demonstration purposes. It's asking me what's going to be happening here or it's showing me what it's going to do. I'm quite happy with what it's going to do. So I'm just going to let it go off and install. This is now using the latest build of Calamari. Um, this is the 3.2.4 branch, which gives me a little bit more control. And what I'm looking into now for the next build of Salient OS is to use the raw file system module in order to do a file system copy rather than an unsquash, which should be a bit quicker for most people. I mean, this doesn't take very long at all anyway. It takes about 10 minutes tops. Um, but the file system copy should be a bit quicker. I believe it uses rsync to do it. So you get a one-for-one a -one copy of the live media on the target system, which you do anyway with this. But the unsquash can take a, a little while and some people were reporting that it, it to them it looked like it had stalled and maybe they were cancelling or rebooting and trying again um it hasn't stalled it it does around this area here it does take quite a long time because this is the bulk of the file system copy going on the rest of it is configuration is set up setting up the locale the user etc and some post um some post removal, even though for some reason Calamari says it's doing an install, it's actually removing packages, it's not installing packages. And so I'm, I'm looking at that net for the next iteration to do a file sync copy rather than the unsquash. So I'm going to pause this here a second and then I'll be back once it's further down the line. Okay, so it's almost finished now. It took a couple of minutes, two or three minutes to get this far. It's now creating the locale. And then it will create the user and then it will do some post removal processes. And this doesn't take very long now once these are done. There's the init RAM FS being created should be the user next and then we can reboot and log into the installed system and I'll show you the steps of what you need to do once you've done that I will update the readme to reflect these changes there goes the bootloader and then we'll have some post removal So we can get rid of the live user from the target system. And this is actually removing packages, not installing packages. It just seems to be an issue with their packages module. 
reporting this. There we go, that's all done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to reboot. So I'm going to shut this machine down. Remove the drive and boot back in. So this is the default boot screen or grub screen. And we're going to boot into the system now. Ignore this, that is a, a virtual box thing. There's nothing on the ISO that's causing that. I've noticed it a few times loading into a VM. Oh, it hasn't detected the screen mode there, so I'm going to quickly restart that. Another virtual box idiosyncrasy. This time it should. I'm not quite sure where this output comes from, but it doesn't happen on the live media. There we go, now we're in. So if you, if you get that, just restart your VM instance and it will detect the screen mode then. I've also included the um, XF86 uh, video for VMware as well. So that should give uh, VMware users native resolution now. So hopefully that's all done. So this is the installed system. And the first thing you need to do really, let's get into SU. So open the terminal, type SU, enter your password. Okay, and now we're in here. Let's just clear that out so we know what we're doing here. And the first thing you need to do is go editor equals nano and then followed by Visudo. And there's a very good reason for doing this. Where at all possible, please do it this way. You will save yourself a lot of headaches. Visudo will ensure, and if you look at the top here, we're running a temp copy. Okay, this is sudo as dot temp. So it's been copied as a temporary file. So if we make any mistakes in here, Visudo will warn us all right, so I'm just going to add my username in here. Okay, you can if you want to. You can uncomment wheel. You are a member of the wheel group. So you can uncomment wheel if you like. You can uncomment sudo if you like. I tend not to do that. But for demonstration purposes, just for this video, I'm going to uncomment both of these so I don't have to enter passwords at all. And that's purely just for this demonstration. But normally you only need to add your username here and save the file and you're good. So now I'm going to exit out of SU. Let's just clear the screen again. Okay, and the first thing you do is pack update. P-A-C-U-P-D. It's just an alias I've set up. Basically, all you're doing is pacman dash capital S Y Y to update and refresh the repositories okay and it's telling us there's five available updates so if i change that now to a g to do a pack upgrade it will then go off it refreshes the mirrors and tells us that there are updates to do so i'm going to let it do those and there's one more step after this because there are a few items which are get source and so we have to use yay and we use exactly the same terminology as we would in pacman because pac uh, yay and pacman yay has almost 100 percent parity with pacman anyway so you can use exactly the same commands and we can see here there are the aur packages for dxvk lutris compton numix circle icons and uh, PAMAC, AUR and YA all need upgrading. So we're going to let them do that. We say yes, we want to remove dependencies after the fact. Just press enter when it says diffs to show, just press enter. And then we're going to import a key for compton.conf. It's a trusted key. So we're going to import that key and then we're going to say yes to do the updates. It's going to bring in the dependencies it needs whilst it's compiling. Once it's done, it will remove those dependencies that are no longer needed so that we don't fill our systems up with dependencies we don't need. This will ensure that DXVK 
and Lutris are fully up to date as well because they were sourced separately through GitHub, which technically um, makes them AUR packages. But rest assured, I would only source packages that I know are safe for this system. And so there's actually two, only two commands you need to perform when performing updates if you do it from the terminal. You can do it from PAMAC up here if you want to. You can enable the AUR in PAMAC, um, but I would recommend doing it from the terminal. If you use the PACUPG pack up grade alias, it automatically refreshes the mirrors and then performs an upgrade. And then do yay, capital S, Y, U to do an upgrade on those AUR packages so that they are always up to date. So periodically, just run those two commands. You, you, PAMAC up in the system tray up here will tell you anyway when there's updates. It will turn red and you'll be notified when there are updates. So that's a good indicator to let you know there are updates and you can view them. You can see what those updates would be. They would appear here. And then you can close that, come down to the terminal and just issue pack upgrade and yay, dash capital SYU and then your system is up to date. If you need to, by default, this should be using global mirrors anyway. And once this update's done, it's gonna build this. So this might take a few minutes, but I'm gonna let it run through so you can see the process. So you can see it's doing the new mix circle icons. Now it's doing PAMAC. Now it's doing Compton Conf, and that's for this little utility here, window effects in your settings panel. That's where that comes from. Now it's doing DXVK. As you can see, it doesn't take very long to do these applications. Now it's doing Lutris. Lutris is probably going to take the longest time. It may not because it exists in the system already. Now it's doing yay. So Lutris has done very quickly there. And now it's up updating yay. Now it's installing the packages. Once this is done, we're going to restart and we'll come back into the system fully updated. You can ignore these output warnings. This is, these are code warnings and they're fine. Everything runs fine. If there was any problems with any of these, it would stop and it wouldn't, there you go. Those are the dependencies being removed, removing old entries from the info directory. So we're removing those dependencies so we don't need them. And that's saving us 625 meg. Okay, so that's done. So now I'm going to restart the system. I'm going to log back in. Hopefully it's going to pick up on the screen mode again. It has, so that's good. And now we're back into the updated system. Now everything's up to date. We're good to roll. So there we have it. That is the base install of Salient OS. <clears throat> and that is how you update it to bring it fully up to date. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up game mode for Steam. And we'll take that from there in the next video very shortly. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you very much.